I think if there was one thing drawing people away from this game more than anything, it is cheating. And so, I've got a lot of points and questions to bring up on this cheating topic, but I just needed to emphasize that right here because, yeah, they can't even open up Reddit without at least five out of the fucking first ten posts being about cheaters. And what do you think of these stats? Mobile phone authentication. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to break down some information that a lot of people most likely wouldn't know about cheating and escape from Tarkov and just how a lot of these exploits and cheat features come about and the process that happens before you start to see this stuff just wreak havoc in the game. A lot of people assume that all this stuff is coming from cheat developers and people that are doing this for huge amounts of money and and a lot of people also say that BSG is in cahoots with them and BSG likes cheaters and all these crazy theories that I hear. And I'm just going to break down in this video what the actual reality is and, and what's actually going on. I'm going to use a quick example to show you guys what I'm going to touch on in this video. For the guys that have been around Tarkov for a while, I'm pretty sure you guys will remember roughly, I think it was about three years ago, uh, there, was around, there was a couple of weeks where... You would load into raids and every single door in the map would be open and you would have just complete access to the entire map and you wouldn't need any keys. This is actually a really good example of what I'm going to touch on in this video because when this happened, as usual, the entire player base just had the same assumptions. The SG lacks cheaters in their game. They don't do nothing about it. And the reality was actually a lot more concerning. It wasn't actual people who were selling this cheat to people for profit. This exploit was actually found out by someone at home to which he then publicly uploaded to a website free for everyone to use and within days, hours, this is what happened to the game. You ever seen this door open? Whoa. What the f dude? You can't go in it. All right, yeah, so don't, someone was definitely f around. That's yeah. crazy. What the f are you automatically hold your breath when you're facing in water? So how this stuff gets from someone at home finding this in their spare time as a hobby and then this then happening in your raids daily is a lot more simpler than what you might assume. The reality is there's actually entire communities who upload uh, open source coding or exploits or all that type of stuff completely for free to the open internet for anyone to grab it and use it or sell it even. And a lot of these guys are doing it completely for free. And to understand these communities, they're kind of very similar to, uh, you know, like a GitHub community or, you know, maybe even I'm sure if maybe in your teens, if you ever used LimeWire or, or maybe even, you know, Pirate Bay and, and things like that, where these people just spend their day handing out information freely to the world for anyone to freely access it and use it and do whatever they like with it. And it's, it's not particularly for profit in a lot of cases. And there is actually thousands and thousands of people doing this that are involved in these communities. And these, they go off, you know, they even have reputation counters who's uploaded the most, you know, source code or who's uploaded the most exploits or you know it's 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 the the scale of it is is actually insane if if you understood that bsg is not only fighting people that are doing this for money daily they're also fighting people that entire communities that just do this as a hobby that, that don't particularly do this for any sort of monetary gain whatsoever they literally just upload this stuff to the world open source just for the for a laugh just because they think it's funny or just because they think people should have this information. And it's it's still happening. It's been happening for a long time since way before Tarkov came along and it's it's not going away. So just to give you the rundown of how these communities work, it's all open source. Uh, these people can actually get paid for this information. 
Uh, a lot of them will just upload it just for the fun of it. And as you see, uh, they'll have a date they've joined. They'll have particular levels. They'll have reputation. You know, they'll, they'll climb up the ranks. The more, the more work they put in or the more code or, or the more exploits they find in games, the higher their reputation will become in these communities. And for them to actually get higher up in reputation, they actually, uh, find the, the more exploits they find, the, the higher reputation they get. And there's people that you see in these communities, like this guy, for example, he is ranked as a god. <laughs> you know, so this guy's leaking a lot of stuff. This guy's finding a lot of exploits. This this guy's the man in the in, in, in these communities. Um, it's, it's not only people that are doing this for money that BSG uh, are fighting daily. It's, it's people that are literally just doing this for the memes people that are just doing this for the sake of it. They've got too much spare time on their hands and I don't I, like, I guess it, it's their hobby or it's just what they do. You know, it's a lot of people aren't aware of this. Like, it, and you, you can see it's crazy to me. You see when something like this drops in these communities or someone, you know, uploads an exploit like this and then you know all over twitch and every tarkov streamer is just getting killed by whatever exploit or whatever's been uploaded on these sites and you know people that are uh, selling cheats and stuff like that it's not long before you see these features implemented into cheats and you know like for example with the um loot teleporting recently like you, you'll, you'll see that stuff hit these websites and it just spreads like wildfire how quickly it spreads and impacts the game is just insane. And for BSG to stop this stuff daily and stop it before it has an impact on the game, they would have to just be like the Terminator. They would have to be online 24-7, constantly recoding the game and changing the game. And it's just, it's not possible for the amount of people that are doing this. There's people doing it for money. There's people doing it for free. There's people that are just doing it for the memes. And there's just, there's so much going on behind the scenes that a lot of the players just, just aren't aware of that. It, it, it's just impossible to stop it. And it, it will always happen. It's just going to come down to how well BSG can maintain it and keep their game stable against people like this, whether they be doing it for free or, or for money. A lot of people watching this will know my story on this channel and how I present this information to everyone. I actually used to be involved in doing the wrong thing in gaming. I spend all my time and energy now kind of trying to give the player base uh, as much information as I can to try and make them feel better about playing a game that's going through issues like this. Because once upon a time, I was someone who kind of took that feeling away from people, kind of gave people a negative feeling about, you know, escaping to a game and having fun. And I try and give that back on this channel and, and make people feel better about playing Escape from Tarkov. And at the time when I was doing the wrong thing, I was, my, my, my shtick was I used to just troll streamers and, um, I would, you know, get accounts and solely just fly around and troll streamers who were streaming. But, uh, basically he's a cheating scumbag who makes YouTube content out of stream sniping streamers with cheats. And, um... <sighs> Hey, he's not he's not very smart and that was my shtick that that was what i did and um i actually found on in these communities that you know you could get very easily get a hold of free uh cheats you could get a hold of there's even uh still to this day there's methods of uh getting around a ban a hardware ban for free from these places that and there's just a lot of issues that come out of these communities that just still aren't solved and for bsg to solve them they would have to recode their entire game from the ground up and you know they're already seven years in and they're not even finished the game and it's just it's going to be a long time before you know maybe once they finish the game and they have a, a finished product then they can start weeding this stuff out but still to this day there's there's stuff coming out of these communities that people just upload for free that is still being used by cheaters today i myself uh found you know these guys upload free files to get around all types of game bans 
and I never had to pay for any kind of program to get around a game ban because people were just uploading them for free and it's just all open source and a lot of people aren't doing it for money and that's the concerning thing now like i have all these people that say to me that you know bsg is all these theories that i hear you know about bsg you know preferring to cheaters in their game and all this stuff and that they just don't understand the depth at which this stuff goes it's it's not people aren't just doing this for money there's there's people that are out there doing this for free and uploading it publicly for free and how how do you you know how do you stop those people like what you know they're not there's i I just don't know the answer for it and it's still happening and it's always going to happen and i I really i don't i don't know what the answer for it would be they they have to finish the game first before they can start weeding out all these thousands and thousands of little issues and, and things that they're having that people are taking advantage of every single day actually seen a video recently uh from a guy uh pirate software i think his name is i'll put his name and all that stuff in the in the video and uh he actually also once used to do the wrong thing and and now spends the majority of his time uh trying to do something positive and and, and it's his job he he's worked for the government he's worked for anti-cheats for entire games and entire gaming companies and he, the way he actually explains it and, and, and he words it really well and, and i want to put that at the end of this video because i think the tarkov player base something that they definitely need to hear and, and should take on board is um just the stuff that this guy has to say and the stuff that he i think he's talking about apex legends in this video but uh i think definitely a huge problem with bsg uh that something that they really need to change is their communication with the player base also they um their communication with the player base is just so bad and um as you'll see in this video what he's saying here about the uh, apex developers i think really it's very similar to bsg and the player base you know they seem to Everyone seems to have this negative perception and all these negative theories. And, and I think the main issue is communication. They just don't communicate with their player base and they're, they're just not doing enough to show the player base that they, that they are fighting this stuff and they don't want it in the game. And that's why this stuff is, is as mainstream as it is. And that's why I hear this, these kind of opinions so much that just aren't reality. You know, um, I'm going to end with this clip. I'll link the actual video in the description and and um it's it's definitely a really good one uh this guy words it really well he's a uh, he's a uh, a lot more intellectually intelligent than i am <laughs> but um yeah that's pretty much the video i'll end with this clip thank you for watching so i've been in the security industry for 20 years i'm a hacker um my job at blizzard entertainment was lead of application security which is all of blizzard's websites globally and then i was a senior red team specialist i have banned over 2 million players throughout my career. I have three black badges from DEF CON, and my last job was hacking power plants for the federal government. This is not my first rodeo. This is in entirely my wheelhouse, right? 100%. Yeah. I've, I've done this for 20 years. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, this guy is the shit when it comes to anti-cheat, cheating, hacking, all that sort of stuff. This guy knows exactly what he's talking about. He's been on both sides. He's done the wrong thing. He's done the right thing. He's banned millions of cheaters. He's, he's even worked for the government. This guy knows his shit you know he's not just some idiot like me who just downloaded some cheats to troll people and um this guy's the real deal the his link is in my description he makes some really good points on he's actually talking about apex but he, he makes some really good points that i think are valid for uh bsg and, and tarkov as well with kind of how they work and you know people's mindset towards bsg and and you know how bsg are operating and the reason why it's definitely a good watch Generally, the way that we do this is you're supposed to do it every three to six months. And it's not about catching the players cheating. And I know that may be weird, right? Why would you ban players if you're not trying to stop the players from cheating? You're not. It, they're actually ammunition. So what we usually do, we do it every three to six months because you, there's a person on the other side that's making the botting or cheating tools. They're creating those tools and they're usually monetizing that in some way right? If they're not monetizing yeah. it, whatever. But when you do this three to six month ban, if they are monetizing it, you get a shitload of chargebacks if they're not using crypto. 
all those players are suddenly angry customers for your opponent. At the same time, you also get a bunch of angry players that are reviewing that bot and telling everyone, don't use this tool. I got banned for this tool. So you do this all at once to overwhelm the shit out of your opponent. All at once. That's why we do every three to six months. And it also stops your opponent, who are the bot creators, from detecting how you caught them. Because they don't know. Yeah. It could be any change they made over the last three to six months. You do it then, at that moment, to basically just wipe them off the map. And we used to do that all the time at Blizzard. Like, while I was at Blizzard, we banned, um, for me, I banned over 2 million accounts in detections that I formed, right? But there were people in risk that banned like 14, 15 million accounts doing this. And each time one of those band waves went through, it shipped away at every one of those cheat creators until many of them fell under the pressure because they couldn't handle it. And that helps make the game better. It's not about the okay. players getting banned. It's about using them as ammo every time. Yeah, I didn't even know this one myself. I thought their main priority was banning the people doing the wrong thing. But as he's explaining, the the method behind ban waves is more so aimed at uh, wiping out cheat developers and the way they make their cheats and, and the way they make money off of doing it to try and slow them down and, and I guess, you know, lessen the impact on the game, I guess, which kind of makes sense. Because, I mean, it does work. I've seen many cheats for Tarkov get hit with one, two, three ban waves and just they just they they don't come back from it because people just will not spend that money again and they just go elsewhere because no one just wants to spend all that money and just get banned relentlessly and just keep doing it you know they just they go elsewhere and they're not going to keep doing it apex yeah, is free to play right yeah it is yeah yeah it's live service so the moment here's the other thing generally games that have pay like costs associated to buying the game it is this is much less common and the reason why is because there's a barrier to entry yeah, there's course. there's way less hacks like this. And I, I know that sucks because free-to-play games are awesome as hell, but the barrier to entry for the attacker is like, whatever, just go make a new one. Who gives a shit, right? There's nothing to tie to them yeah, to it. Yeah. They just go generate a new email, go make a new game. Who gives a shit? Doesn't matter. I can make a million Steam accounts a day. Whatever, right? And that's that's how that shit happens. And it's sad. You know, it's it's sad, but that is, that is the state of free-to-play games. You're always going to have that. So what you need to do at that point is just attack the cheat creators. And, like, if they're not doing regular band waves, if they're not doing that every three to six months, there are two reasons why. Either they don't have the manpower for it, or they don't have the detection method for it. It's, it's sophistication or organization issues, always. And, like, sophistication is going to come down to, like, hey, we don't have a method for catching these people. We don't have a good way to detect this other than player-driven reporting, right? That sucks. That's a shit place to be. That's the same place we were for StarCraft 2. Most of the people who get banned in StarCraft 2, they get banned at the end of the season because they get reported and a, a actual risk employee has to go and watch the game to see if that person reacted to something in Fog of War. It sucks. It's a shit way to be, but that is sometimes the only solution, right? Outside of that, you need heuristic detection and that's very hard to develop for. So like, it, it's not always possible. The other one is going to be organization, which maybe, maybe they just don't have the people for it. They don't got the manpower, man. And, like, they haven't put enough people into that team, it may be tough to do. Because, to be real with you... Fire a ton of them. Yeah. Six, yeah, security, yeah, firing a ton of them, not great. But also, security people are expensive as shit, dude. That What we do yep. is not cheap. And I can understand that as well. So, like, on the dev side, I'm, I'm wondering if they just can't solve this issue right now. And they might be able to solve it later. Or maybe they just can't solve it because they're overwhelmed by it, man. And that's, that's so it, awful. It's... It's something I've found myself saying to people a ton. Like, people in Tarkov don't realize just how good they've got it because I've played other games like, you know, DayZ, Apex, Counter Strike, and their cheating problem is far worse than Tarkov. Like, these cheaters are getting accounts for basically free for, for years now. And it's just a never ending recurring issue that's just never been solved. And that's actually what made me come over to Tarkov was because just how bad other games were. And being that I'm someone who's done the wrong thing in Tarkov, I'll tell, I've, I tell people myself, it's, it's so much easier to get away with doing the wrong thing in other games as opposed to what it is in Tarkov. And even lately now, it's less likely you'll last an entire wipe cheating now as opposed to when I first started doing this a year ago on this channel. It was very highly co highly common that cheaters were lasting entire wipes a year ago when I first started doing this on this channel. But now, it's just, it's not as common. It's not as common. In today's age on the internet, and in general, if there's a bunch of wild-ass claims happening like this, if you sit silently in the back, the room is going to fill up with people who are making wild claims. 
and no one yeah. is going to have any other voice to listen to. So they're just going to believe the wild claims. As a company, you guys got to come out and say, this is what we're doing. We know this is a problem. We agree with you. Let's fight them together. Change that shit. Change the narrative back around to be a collaborative one with the players who hate this because you hate it too as the, as the team that's working on the game. And you know you hate it. You have people working on this shit. Work with the players. Tell them you're working with them. Be public about it. You could turn this around into a win instantly by doing that. Even yep. if it takes a long time to fix, even if it's really shit to fix, even if you don't have a plan yet to go forward, talking to your player base is always the right choice. And this is definitely something I feel BSG needs to do more of. They they don't do it enough and it, they just they don't talk to their player base. They don't get on the same level as the people that are playing this game and and just be a little bit more open about about things. You know what I mean? It's very rare you see Nikita talking about the problem with cheating in Escape from Tarkov. It's extremely rare. And when he does, it's very vague. It's very, you know, simple answers. It's with no thought. And it's no wonder the player base feels betrayed. And no wonder everyone just assumes that this is going to be the state of the game forever. And my response to the statement is, it never makes sense to attack developers in the face of cheating in games. Devs are on the side of the players. They don't want this happening as much as you don't. They also can't communicate everything they are doing at all times. There are legal hurdles, financial implications, and they would be tipping their hands to the attackers. Fog of war goes both ways. The only thing I would suggest is letting players know you care as developers exactly as he is doing here. Because that's what he's doing. It's him saying, absolutely. It is saying that, yeah. you know, he cares. And he's going to get lambasted in the comments for it. People are going to burn him alive. But, like, that is just how that's going to go, right? I see this happening all the time with BSG. Just They just get absolutely roasted. That's pretty much the video. It's a bit long. It's longer than I wanted it to be. But I'll put some chapters in.